Hello everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, I will show you step by step, how to add an additional domain controller, to an existing domain using Windows Server 2025. This step is essential to enhance the reliability, and availability of your Active Directory environment. Whether you are expanding your network, to improve redundancy, load balancing, or just preparing for disaster recovery, this tutorial will provide you, with everything you need to know. I have an existing domain controller on Windows Server 2025, the server name is DoIT Server 2025, and the existing domain name is OK25.local. OK I will also check the network connectivity, and the IP address, of this server. All of this information must be available to you, before you start adding another controller to this existing domain. This server has an IP address, of 10.0.0.0.1, and open on to the new server, to learn how to set it up and configure it, before upgrading as an additional domain controller. From the server manager page, click on the local server, on the left side. To save time, I renamed this server to do IT additional 2025, and you will notice that it is still working on a work group. I will also assign an IP address, to this server. So click on the network card, I gave it a static IP address of 10.0.0.50. It is also necessary to assign an IP address to the DNS server, and in this case the domain controller server address will already exist, to which we will add this additional domain controller server. This step is very important to facilitate and simplify adding a domain controller without any problems related to connecting to the primary domain controller. After you have finished renaming the server and assigning a static IP address to the server, the next step, is to install Active Directory Domain Services, so click on Manage, from the Server Manager page, and click on Add Roles and Features. Here and on the Before You Begin page, click on the Next button to continue. Then select Role Based, or Feature Based Installation, and click on the Next button. Then select your server, from the Server Group, this is in case you have more than one server, and click on Next. Here and in the Role Selection step, Select Active Directory Domain Services, a pop-up window will appear asking to add the required features. Click on Add Features. Also add the DNS server, and click on Add Features. Then click on the Next button, to continue with the rest of the steps. And in the Features step, click on the Next button directly, as there are no additional features required, to install Active Directory Domain Services. Then, click on Next. You can review the information on the Active Directory Domain Services page, to understand what is being installed, and click on Next button. And here on the Confirmation page, review your choices, then click on Install button. And once the installation is complete, click on Promote this server, to a domain controller. In the Deployment Configuration window, select the option Add a Domain Controller, to an existing domain, then enter your full domain name. Then, click on the Change button, and provide credentials for a user who has the necessary permissions, so that the existing domain is approved and authenticated, it is usually preferable to use the administrator account responsible, click OK, and after agreeing to add the domain to this account, click on Next. Now we have domain controller options, specify the roles, for the new domain controller, and usually it will include both DNS server, and global catalog. Also you must enter a password for the directory services restore mode. This password must be remembered well, and this is necessary to restore the domain controller if necessary, then click next. You will not need to update the DNS server, we already have it on the primary domain controller, so click next, and in the additional options step, leave the replication source as any domain controller, unless you need to specify a particular source then click on Next. In this step it is usually preferable, to leave the default paths as they are, for both the database, log files and the csvol folder, and click Next, to continue with the rest of the steps. In this step review the configuration, and make sure everything is correct before installing, also you can view the script, and save the configuration as a PowerShell script, if needed for future automation. And click Next. Now, you can click on the install button, to start the promotion process, it will take a few minutes. The server will restart immediately, after the promotion is done. 
and add it to the existing domain controller. After restarting the server, log in with the domain administrator account, and once the server is open, and the server manager dashboard is opened. And by clicking on the local server, I want to check the network card, and the two IP addresses, and the DNS address, so that we can verify that our primary domain controller is the DNS server, and verify that it has assigned itself to the alternate DNS server, with the local loop IP address, and this is at least what we want now. Then go to tools, and select Active Directory Users, and Computers. And open the Active Directory, to make sure that all accounts are synchronized, and also to make sure that the new server, appears as a domain controller. The server has already been added, to the domain controller. I will also test the replication, by creating a new user on this domain controller, by going to the primary domain controller, to make sure that the replication is working well. Open Active Directory Users and Computers from the primary domain controller to make sure that the new user that we just created is listed. Yes it does exist, which means the repetition is working fine now. And by clicking on the OU Call Domain Controller, you should also find that you have two domain controllers, which are the primary and added domain controller. I will also check the DNS configuration, click on Tools, and select DNS Server. Then the DNS Management Console will open, and by clicking on the Domain Controller, and by expanding Forward Lookup Zone, and then selecting the private domain, you will find that our Active Directory zones have been replicated to the DNS, and you will see that the records are correct, so you can rely on the added domain controller. That's all for the video on how to add an additional domain controller, to an existing domain using Windows Server 2025. By following the steps we've outlined, you can improve the reliability, availability, and fault tolerance of your Active Directory environment. Adding a new domain controller ensures that your network remains resilient, even if a single domain controller fails. It also helps balance the authentication load, and improve overall performance. The process involves the process involves installing the Active Directory domain services role, promoting the server to a domain controller, and checking redundancy and functionality. Each step is essential to ensure seamless integration into your existing environment. The process involves installing the Active Directory domain services role, promoting the server to a domain controller, and checking redundancy and functionality. Each step is essential to ensure seamless integration into your existing environment. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and share it with anyone who might benefit from it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and IT tips. Your support helps us create more valuable content like this. See you in the next video.